Hello all of you beautiful people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and you know that saying, you should always aim for the moon because even if you miss you can still land amongst the stars? Well these games here did not do that and even though they tried incredibly hard to impress, ended up doing a full orbit and then burning up on re-entry to critical lambasting. So let's take a look at them today, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com and these are 8 video games that tried too hard. Number 8, Remothered Broken Porcelain. Well, the game title says it all, it's broken. So Remothered Broken Porcelain is a game that unfortunately has a pretty apt title because when it dropped, ugh, the numerous issues did lead to many saying that it was indeed utterly broken. But it actually had a bigger problem, it truly didn't know what it wanted to be. It cherry picked so many ideas from other survival horror franchises such as Silent Hill, Outlast and Amnesia, yet it quickly falls apart like a wobbly Jenga tower. The second instalment promised a more robust gameplay experience filled with a terrifying story, great stealth gameplay and a fantastic location to explore. Unfortunately, these ideas never really fully came to fruition. Where the first game in the series stuck with a core cool concept of sneaking around a creepy old mansion and pushing the narrative forward, here it just throws you in at the deep end and just tells you to just understand what's going on. If a game chooses to throw the player into the deep end with such little explanation as to what is going on, you better dang well hope that the setup to the premise is enough to keep your players invested. Of course, the opposite is done here and you quickly go through the opening hours of the game with that strong feeling of incoherence and frustration never letting up. They tried to cram in so many new ideas here but forgot the fundamental one, make the game good. Number 7, Anthem. Probably best not to sing this song. I'm not sure what else can be said about Anthem at this point that hasn't already been said, but you know what, you can't really do a list about games that try too hard and not include Anthem. It's like this list was created just for Anthem. Now most of us know the story by now, but for those who don't, Anthem was created by the legendary game developer Bioware, a development studio known for its high quality RPGs such as Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic and the original Mass Effect trilogy. Yet this saw them team up with EA. Bum, bum. And as you can already imagine, this didn't end up well for Anthem. From a terribly repetitive gameplay and mission loop to awful loot drops to a generic setting, Anthem tried as hard as it could, yet ultimately failed to impress at best, and at worst, lost almost all of its players along the way. Anthem was, and still is, part of the live gaming service boom, and this market has already got enough competition, but EA were determined to get in on the action. Instead of making a truly unique and wholeheartedly enjoyable game, it tried so hard to ape the success of others that it ended up looking like a dirty monkey. Now don't get me wrong, in recent months a lot of tweaks have been made to improve the overall experience, but still, we can't forget the fact that they had to toss out the original roadmap and had to start rebuilding the core experience in the first place in the hopes of being able to re-engage the player base that they utterly failed. Number 6, Radical Heights, the battle royale that failed to take off. So Radical Heights was created out of pure desperation and necessity as a last ditch effort for Cliff Blazinski's Boss Key Productions, after the absolute failure that was Lawbreakers. Now, while I do admire the paradigm shift here as well as the courage it takes to make such a crazy change in direction, trying to take the best of your competition to try and make a new game will most likely always lead to a failed game. Such was the case with Radical Heights, an 80s inspired battle Royale with some pretty unique gameplay concept, but ultimately was just a game that looked too much like its competition, namely Fortnite, to garner any sort of critical success. Trying to draw players away from the likes of Fortnite and Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is going to be a difficult task. Yet Radical Heights persisted, and while you do have to admire the fact that the studio was very upfront and honest about the game being in very early access, even to the point of using it as a marketing tactic, gamers simply weren't captivated by a game that looked this janky and was this buggy. Had Radical Heights released prior to Fortnite and PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds, then maybe we'd have been telling a different story, but unfortunately, this was a case of trying too hard and trying too damn late. Number 5, Resident Evil 6. Who wants some more action in their horror game? Now, despite every single piece of evidence pointing to the contrary, Capcom, when it came to Resident Evil 6, forged ahead by making the game more bombastic and action heavy. Oh dear, said many fans. But wait, said Capcom, don't worry, that's just one of the three storylines that we're going to be shoehorning into this game. Oh, that sounds like a lot of content, and it's going to have the return of mercenaries mode. Oh, that sounds brilliant, and all the campaigns, they're going to be standalone ones and be really, really long. Oh, ooh, okay, calm down a bit. And one of them's got Leon S. Kennedy, and it's going to be a traditional Resident Evil one, and the other one's going to be an action heavy one, and the other one's going to be, well, technically an also action heavy one, but it's going to have this really cool guy who we really want to be Dante, but he's not Dante. Okay, just calm down, Capcom. You really are trying too hard that you're becoming 
desperate. Resident Evil 5, I know, didn't go as well as you wanted it to. But doubling down on the things that weren't popular about that game does not sound like the recipe for success. Luckily, they did seem to learn their lesson by switching up the formula for the better when it came to Resident Evil 7, but for a long old while, old Giraffident Evil 6 here, thanks to its ugly logo, was the laughing stock of the entire franchise. Number 4. Sonic Boom. Gotta go boring. Sonic Boom is yet another one of the Sonic games that tried to reinvent itself instead of doubling down on its strengths and previous successes. It's so strange that Sega continually tries to reinvent the wheel when it comes to this franchise. The original 2D games were some of the most loved games of the 90s, yet somewhere along the line, Sega decided to leave behind that success and arduously struggle to make Sonic into something that most players never even asked for. Sonic Boom wanted to try and compete with the likes of Super Mario Galaxy and New Super Mario Bros. on the Wii, which, in hindsight, it's quite obvious that it failed in that attempt. Instead of keeping in theme with Sonic's successful games that focused on high-speed platforming gameplay, Sonic Boom decided to add in more traditional platforming systems as well as weapon combat. The Sonic games never needed these types of gameplay concepts, but Sega thought it was best to drill down into new ideas rather than go back to the gold mines they already had open. Thank goodness the incredible Sonic Mania released to show the world what Sonic was about, because that managed to pay homage to the classics and also add in just enough new content to satiate new players. That was effectively the perfect Sonic game. Sonic Boom, ooh, was not. Number 3. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare – Chasing Away the Stars Oh, Call of Duty, how many love to hate on you despite buying you each and every year. But you know what? Out of all of them, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare was perhaps one of the most divisive in the entire series. And why is that? Well, it's mostly due to the fact that people were completely ready to move away from the whole future tech space adventures of previous entries and were instead hoping for a more grounded experience like Battlefield 1 or Call of Duty World War 2. But then Call of Duty Infinite Warfare decided to continue in the opposite direction, opting instead to push the game further into the reach of the universe. The outcome of this was one of the most disliked Call of Duty trailers in YouTube history. It was clear that the series was simply trying too hard to continue to cash in on people's fascinations with the future, but not realizing that we were ready to move beyond this and get back to boots on the ground. While the core gameplay was still polished as hell and the game had a surprisingly enjoyable campaign, it all felt a little too derivative of the previous entries in the series to ever feel like things were going in the right direction. Plus, if we're talking about trying too hard, then we have to talk about the egregious monetization practices here because this, Jesus Christ mate, why don't you just say you're mugging me? All of this combined to doom Infinite Warfare to be one of the most disliked in the series' history. Number 2. Mario Party 9 – One party you don't want to be invited to Now why did Nintendo do this? They thought for some reason that the best way to make a new Mario Party game was to take the majority of the great gameplay concepts that they had in the previous Mario Party entries and then throw them right out the bloody window. Mario Party 9 made the fatal game development error of taking what people loved about the series and changing them simply for the sake of change. Now, Mario Party had always been beloved for its board game-like gameplay, friendship ruining competition, fun mini-games, whimsical boards, and of course, the Mario series is, 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 is characters. And while the ninth entry in the series does retain some of these aspects, it decided to change the core gameplay loop to its detriment. Instead of moving around a board based on a dice roll, this entry decided to take away your individual movement and instead replace it with a vehicle mechanic where all characters travel together. This core change to player movement on the game boards made the strategic aspect the series had become known for absolutely moot. Coins and stars were also a thing of the past, and while the minigames themselves were still mostly enjoyable, those bigger gameplay concepts that were removed made for a lackluster and mundane Mario Party experience. Boo. And number 1. Metal Gear Survive – When a name can't save the game Metal Gear Survive was created out of the toxic ashes of the fallout between the legendary game director Hideo Kojima and Konami. Unfortunately, Metal Gear Survive was brought out as a quick cash grab by Konami to simply take the success of the Metal Gear name and try to spin it into a new entry that nobody was asking for, thereby tarnishing the famed series' namesake in the process. Now, you could argue that this wasn't a game that tried too hard and barely tried at all when you look at the bloody programming, because goddamn, it looks like it was made out of Swiss cheese and stinks twice as hard. But still, this was a desperate, try-hard attempt by Konami to try and grab every bit of cash it could from the dwindling player base 
who probably weren't wise as to what was going on behind the scenes despite the big media blowout. This was the absolute dregs of the series, but was spun in a way that was trying to promise us a brand new revitalization. It was disgusting and as ugly as the goddamn graphics in this title. Plus, if you want to talk about try-hard stuff, again, look at the monetization of this game. Look at the goddamn cheek of them trying to charge real-world money for extra save slots. This game is an abomination, and we should all do ourselves a favor by trying hard to forget it existed. And there we go, my friends. Those were eight video games that tried too hard. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comment section below. As always, I've been Jules. You can go follow me over on Twitter at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice. It's my personal gaming channel where I stream every single Wednesday and Sunday. It'd be great to see you over there. But before I go, my friend, I just want to say something. There is always something that we should always try hard to do, and that is be kind to ourselves both mentally and physically. You deserve love, happiness, and success, my friend. Do not let anything or anyone else tell you otherwise, all right? Now go out there and absolutely smash it, you big ledge. As always, I've been Jules. You've been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.